Hi everyone, we're continuing our series of beginner chess videos here on My Chess Notebook. And the purpose of this video is to tell you that a game of chess can sometimes end in a draw, which is a tie game. And there are five ways it can happen. The first way we're going to explore is called stalemate. In order to understand stalemate, let's review what checkmate means. Checkmate means that you put your opponent in check by directly attacking his king, and there's no way to get out of check. That would be a checkmate. Well, here's an example of a stalemate. Suppose it's white's turn, and white moves their king up to the b6 square. Notice the black king is not in check. That did not check the black king. It's not in a direct attack. However, you can tell that black has no legal moves because all of those squares are covered. You can't move here or here, the queen has that covered. You can't move here or here, the king has those squares covered. And you can't move here either, the queen has that square covered diagonally. So black is not in check, but he's not allowed to move into check either. So that's what a stalemate is. A stalemate is like a checkmate where you can't move, except it lacks the check. So it's kind of a tragedy because white has the superior army. He still has his queen worth nine points and black only has his king. So white should have been more careful here to checkmate that black king. Moving the king up left no escape square for the black king. Here's how white should have proceeded, something we'll explore in a future video. White could have moved his queen here, building a nice wall. The black king would be forced to move over, then the white king can move up, and the black king can move to either of these two squares, and either one he moves to, it's possible to checkmate. Now that's a checkmate right there. The black king cannot move anywhere. There are no legal squares, those are all covered but it's different than a stalemate because he is in check. Okay, so a stalemate is like a checkmate that lacks the check, and that's a draw. All right, let's look at another example of a stalemate. In this position, let's say that white moves their king up to the d7 square, and now it's black's turn. Does black have any legal moves? Well, let's check. The king cannot move to the b8 square, because the bishop has that covered. He cannot move the king to the b7 square, because the white pawn here has that covered. These pawns cannot move either, they're blockaded by the white pawns, so there's actually no legal move for black. But black is not in check, so it's a stalemate. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say in this position white decides to move their rook up here. Now you can check that the black king cannot move anywhere. It can't move there. The white king has that covered, and the white rook has these two squares covered. However, the black king is not in check. Well, some beginners mistakenly believe this is stalemate, but it's not. Stalemate means that you're not in check, and you have no legal moves. Well, black has plenty of legal moves because black can move this bishop all over the board. Let's say black decides to move the bishop here. Looks like a bad move because he just put it right in line where it can be captured, but it's a little bit of a trap that black is trying to set. Let's say white now captures the bishop. Ah, that was a big mistake. Okay, if white wanted to win, then he just blew it because that is a stalemate. Now it's black's turn. Can black move anywhere? Well, the king cannot move to any of those squares. Notice the white rook builds a nice wall here. So the king can't move. And both of the pawns are blockaded, and there's no more bishop to move around the board. So the black king is not in check, but there are no legal moves. That's a stalemate, which is a tie game. Let's look at uh, one more example. So here I wanted to tell you the difference between a stalemate and a checkmate and really solidify this. If the white queen moves, let's say, here, that's a checkmate because it checks the black king, and the black king cannot move to any of those squares safely. All of those are covered. 
Okay. However, if the white queen moves up to just there, that's a stalemate, which is a tie game, a draw, because the black king is not in check and it still can't move to any of those squares. So there's a big difference between checkmate and stalemate. If you're trying to win, you have to avoid stalemate. Okay, so that's one way you can draw a game by stalemate. There's a second way you can draw a game. Another way you can draw a game is to have something called a dead position. Let's look at an example of a dead position. Right here. This is considered a dead position because there's nothing left. There are just the two kings. Neither side can checkmate the other, no matter what they do. In fact, neither side can even put the other side into check because you remember the two kings can't be next to each other. If white tries to come up and check the black king, then the black king would be checking the white king, and that's illegal for white to move into check. So this is a dead position. A dead position means that no matter what happens, checkmate is actually impossible to occur, even through bad play. Um, and a dead position is an automatic draw. Here's another example of a dead position. Now, white does have a bishop, but still that's not enough to checkmate the black king, it turns out. If the bishop moved here, for example, to the f6 square to call check, the king would be able to escape the check by moving down to the h7 square. You can try this out yourself if you have a chessboard, get the two kings and a bishop. Try to arrange them so that there is a checkmate. You won't be able to. It's impossible. So people say that white has insufficient checkmating material or mating material insufficient, not enough material or pieces to checkmate. Here's another example of insufficient mating material right here. Turns out a king and a knight is also not enough to deliver a checkmate, no matter what black does. Black can't even accidentally stumble into a checkmate. For example, if the knight moves here to call check, the king would always be able to sidestep right over there. Now you can also try to arrange the pieces and convince yourself that a checkmate is actually impossible. So that's a dead position and it's an automatic draw. Now if you had a king and a rook versus a king, that would be enough to checkmate. We're going to practice that in a later video. Or if you had a king and a queen, that would be plenty to checkmate your opponent. But it turns out a king and a knight is not enough, and a king and a bishop is not enough. An interesting thing to ask is, what about a king and two knights? Well, this is not a dead position, and it's not an automatic draw. Let's see why. Well, if it's white to move, he might play his knight here and call check. Now, the black king has two squares to consider moving to. The white king has these other three squares covered. Let's say the black king goes into the corner. Probably not a good idea. Then white can take his other knight and call check, and it's actually a checkmate. Okay, the black king has nowhere to run. These squares are covered by the king. This square is covered by this knight. Okay, so that's a checkmate. So a checkmate's possible, so it's not a dead position, so you can't just say this is a draw. However, when you learn more chess, you realize that a king and two knights can never force a checkmate, meaning black would have to make a mistake for it to occur. It's always possible for black to avoid the checkmate. Uh, for example, once white called check here, turns out moving to the corner was a big mistake, and that black king should have moved to the f8 square instead. And then it turns out there's no way to force a checkmate. Um, so maybe there um, would be an ending like this where the two players would try, the white player would try to checkmate the black player, but it would be taking forever. The black player would keep escaping, and you wonder, well, does the game go on forever then? Well, no, there are other rules for checkmate. Let's look at another one. Oh, first, before we look at our next rule of checkmate, I wanted to point out uh, something, another common misconception. So we said earlier that a king and a knight 
is insufficient mating material against a, a just a king. However, if your opponent has additional pieces besides their king, then you may be able to deliver a checkmate. This is not a dead position. That black pawn sitting right there is actually hindering the black king from escaping, and it's helping white deliver a checkmate. White can get a checkmate by moving the knight here to the f2 square. So that checks the black king, and the black king has nowhere to run, and unfortunately he's being blocked in by his own pawn. So the presence of additional pieces kind of clouds that issue. This is not a dead position. Okay, take a look at this position. Now this is not a dead position. This is actually something that uh, we're gonna learn how to do in a future video. White can checkmate black. It's not too hard to do it, and it usually takes like 10 or 15 moves from a position like this where you have a king and a queen versus a king. But sometimes beginners get down to this kind of a position and are unable to figure out how to checkmate because they haven't learned it yet. They might do something like just chase that king around all day, just keep calling check and the king gets out of check and they call check, the king goes back and they can't figure it out. Well, does the player of the black pieces have to move around forever and just submit to this torture? No, there is a rule that saves black the headache. It's called the 50-move rule. And the 50-move rule precisely states if both players make 50 consecutive moves where no piece has been captured and no pawn has moved, then you can claim a draw. It's not an automatic draw, it doesn't just happen. You have to count, make sure that 50 moves have passed, and then you have to stop and say, okay, here, look, 50 moves have passed, I'm calling it a draw. Now it can happen in more complicated situations than this, but this is a typical one. In this position, if white never accidentally loses their queen and uh, just keeps chasing that black king around the board all day, then no pieces will be captured, no pawns will move, and so 50 moves later, black can say, hey, you're taking too long, it's a draw. Okay, so what about other ways to draw? Well, there's an interesting one I wanna talk about in this position. Suppose you're playing the black pieces and you started at the bottom of the board here, and you look like you're in a lot of trouble because your king is kind of boxed in here by your pawns, and it looks like white is threatening to checkmate. If white could bring this rook down to that square, that would check the black king, the black king would have nowhere to run. It couldn't run to these two squares. Those are covered by the rook. It couldn't move up either. Oops, couldn't move up here either because the pawns have those squares, that square covered. So, Black is being threatened with a checkmate here. And black is actually down a little bit of material too. If you count the material, let's do that for practice. You'll see white is ahead in points. Uh, rooks are worth five, so there's two rooks, that's 10 points. Pawns are one, so one, two, three, four. So 14 total points for white. What about black? Well, a queen is worth nine. And then three more pawns, three points, makes 12. So 12 for black. 14 for white, 12 for black. So white has more material. White is threatening checkmate. So black is in trouble. But black has a way to save the game and get a draw. Here's how he does it. He's going to call check like that. And the black king has only one square to go to right there. Then the king, queen is going to come back over here and call check. And the white king has only one square to escape to, which is right there. And then go back here and call check. And then the white king has to go back here. And then go back here and call check. And the white king has to go there. Do you see the pattern? This is going to be endless, right? This is a draw, and there's a specific rule that states a draw in this position. Here's the rule. It's called the three-fold repetition rule. It's a little complicated. It says if the same position 
occurs on the board, that means all the pieces are in their same places. If the same position occurs on the board with the same player to move each time, three times, if the same position occurs three times, then you can claim a draw. You can say, hey, look, we've seen this before. This is the third time we've seen this position. I'm calling it a draw. So that usually happens by just repeating moves like this, going back and forth. Um, but <clears throat> the rule is more complicated than that. You don't even have to repeat the moves. You just have to repeat the position. If you can get into the position by a different series of moves for the third time, it's a draw. Uh, another common misconception is some people think, well, it has to be three consecutive times. Well, they don't even have to be consecutive. It could be on the 17th move, the 23rd move, and the 55th move. If, if you get the same position three times, then it's a draw. It's even a little bit more complicated than that, but I don't want to overwhelm you too much in this beginner video. But I'll say it anyway because I like completeness and I want to be completely honest here. Um, the rule says you have to have the same position occur for the third time with the same person to move. Now, by the same position, we mean not only the pieces are on their, their same exact squares for the third time, but both sides have the same castling rights and the same en passant rights. Okay, and I'll leave it at that. I don't want to discuss in too much detail here. Okay, there is one last way to draw a chess game. Let's say you get down to this position and it's completely equal. You each have a king and a rook. Now, you might play on and try to checkmate your opponent, but you realize that you just can't do it. Every time you try to corner your opponent's king, their, their rook is going to help save them. Neither side can seem to make any progress. Well, you can continue to play to the 50 move rule if you never capture any pieces or move any pawns, but there's another way to get a draw that's quicker. It's called a draw by agreement. Now, here's how that works. If you think the position is going to be drawn with best play, there's no hope for either side to win, then you can offer a draw. You, what you do is you make your move, and then you verbally say, I would like a draw. Do you agree? And your opponent has to agree with you. And if he says, yes, I agree, I can't win either, then the game is a draw. And there's usually a button when you play online, there's a button you can press that says draw offer. And you can offer the draw. You can do it at any point during the game, although you don't want to be bothersome about it. You don't want to continually offer draws to your opponent. You want to do it in positions where you can make no progress like this one, and your opponent can make no progress. Um, there, there are sometimes tournament rules that forbid the offering of draws. For example, in top-level chess, there have been tournaments that, that have rules like, oh, you can't offer a draw until you've played at least 30 moves. Just trying to make sure you've, you've, you've at least tried to win the game and you're not doing some kind of prearranged thing where the players are splitting the point. Okay, but anyway, those are the five ways to draw a chess game. I'll write them down in the description below the video if you want a reference for them. Uh, and they may happen to you in your games. You may get some draws. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I hope to see you for the next one.